Hi everyone. On November 5th, the Holy Orthodox Church celebrates the memories of two remarkable saints who happen to be married, yet not really married in the way that we think of marriage today. Their names were Galactian and Episteme. Now, Galactian was born into a very well-to-do family uh, where there was much love in the family, although both of the parents were pagans. His father's name was Cletophon, and his mother's name was Lefkipi. Now, both of them were doing very, very well, but they were also distraught because of all the great money and riches and things like this that they had. They had no one to pass it on to because Lefkipi was barren. Now, she grieved much about this because it was probably the one thing in her life that wasn't going particularly well. And Cletophon wasn't very happy with her either because he was blaming her. And one day he let her know in no uncertain terms how he felt about this and the fact that even though there was great love between them, as I said earlier, he was blaming her for the fact that they had no heir. At the time, there was a man named Onufrius. Now, Onufrius was actually a priest monk, but he would dress like a beggar, and he would go to different houses asking for alms in order to distribute them to the poor. This was also a time when he was sort of keeping under cover because since this was in the reign of the horrid emperor Decius back in the late 200s, he was a man who was intent on persecuting Christians as much as he possibly could, so Anufrius tried to stay under the radar, so to speak. Well, one day he ended up uh, coming to the house of Cletophon and Lefkipi, and Cletophon was not there, but Lefkipi was, and because she had just been so horribly chastised by her husband, she was not in much mood to entertain visitors. But Anufrius kept pounding at the door because he realized that this was a house that he should be at, although he wasn't quite sure why yet. Eventually, the servants did open the door, and they invited, in hi in hi invited him in in a cordial manner, set him down at the table, gave him something to eat, and finally Lefkipi came into his presence. And by her heavy sighs, he realized that something was not right, that she was quite distraught. Well, finally, she told him exactly what was going on. And Anufrius, realizing also that she was a pagan because she said that she had implored various deities and there was nothing happening, said to her, well, you know, these idols that you are beseeching for this are lifeless and dead and Nothing can come of, uh, come of this. So why don't you instead pray to the one true God? And when Lefkipi heard this, she understood that Anufrius was a Christian, although she didn't know much about it. But she did know that there was trouble on the horizon for all who professed Christ. Well, she became completely convinced of the things that Anufrius was telling her. And he said, finally, after a suitable time of catechizing her, why don't you get baptized? And she agreed. And so the servants there filled up a huge trough of water and Anufrius baptized her. Well, not long after this, when Anufrius, after instructing her on how to live the Christian life, left the place, her husband came home and again they were talking and she told him that she had actually had a dream of a man upon a cross who was outstretched and who could overcome nature and that she announced to her husband that indeed she had conceived. Well the husband was thrilled about this and began offering prayers to the gods but she said no don't do that this is a worthless thing for you to do and then she opened up to him about the visit of Anufrius to her home and finally, because Anufrius had prophesied this, her husband also was baptized. And yet they were quite worried because they knew that it was going to be a difficult life for them from that point on because of their Christian faith. Well, not too long after, maybe nine months in fact, Galactian was born. 
And he was a young man who grew up strong in the spirit and surpassed all the other young men around him. And when he had finally become 24 years of age and his mother had actually reposed before then, his father was trying to get him to marry. He didn't really want to marry, but he agreed to it. And so they found a 10-year-old virgin named Episteme to marry him. And he said that indeed he would marry her. So the wedding took place. And afterward, though, Galactian really would not go near her. He wouldn't even kiss her. And Episteme was a little worried about this. She said, why do you despise me so? I mean, this, this doesn't seem right. And he said, well, because I cannot mix light with darkness, because I have received baptism and am a Christian, and you are a pagan and still worshiping these ridiculous gods. Well, Episteme, after time, agreed that she too would get baptized. And she had many dreams and visions from the Lord about all of these things, one indicating to her that she and her husband should separate and preserve their virginity. In the dream, she saw three choirs, men in black robes, women in black robes, and then virgins as bright as the sun. And the Lord instructed her that these first two choirs represented monastics, and the third represented the unmarried who preserved their virginity. So she decided, along with Galactian, that they would do this. And so they headed out to uh, near Mount Sinai, where he joined a monastery, and she was given over to the care of a deaconess and four nuns who were working on their salvation. This happened for many, many years that they were like this, each growing in grace, each becoming more and more Christ-like day after day until finally the authorities who heard that there were these monastics in this area came and they wanted to be rid of all the Christians in the area. So they came upon Galactian and Galactian was fearless in his rebuttals when they were yelling at him to worship the gods. And he said, your gods are nothing. They are lifeless. In fact, they are worthy of laughter. Well, this didn't go down too well with those guards who were there. And yet Episteme found out that Galactian had been taken. And so she too, because she was married to him, even though she had accepted monasticism, went to find him and said, look, we are united and you have been my spiritual advisor and you are the reason I'm a Christian and I want to follow you to whatever happens uh, with you with these soldiers who are now taking you. And so although the deaconess there was trying to persuade her other word, otherwise, Episteme went and found Galactian and together they went off where the soldiers were very, very brutal to both of them. They tortured Galactian, and Episteme thought, you know, why are you just torturing him? Why not me also? And so they thought that she was being very forward in the things that she was saying, and so they beat her mercilessly so that she might be more temperate in her remarks. And they stripped her down and put her in an amphitheater. And she said, why are you doing this to me? I've led a blameless life, and yet you strip me down in front of all these spectators and do these sorts of things. Your gods are indeed, and she repeated what Galactian had said, laughable. So at that point, they took both of the martyrs and put bamboo shoots underneath their fingernails. And yet the martyrs endured it all courageously. But Episteme again said, for these things that you're doing, and particularly the magistrate who was coming down hard on them, because of these things that you are doing, you are going to suffer not only eternally, but in this life as well. And immediately when she said this, the people that were torturing her became blinded, except for the magistrate. And because of the blindness, they all began to beg her, beg her to restore their, uh, their sight, because they too became Christians. Because as the hagiography of these two say, often when we are deprived of physical sight, our spiritual sight is enlightened. And that's what happened with these people who were torturing them. And so upon their repentance, 
She prayed to God that their sight would be restored, and indeed it was. However, the magistrate was unyielding, and so he brought them together and beheaded both of them on the 5th of November in the late 200s. These two extraordinary saints, who even though they had chosen virginity in their married life, yet were united in a way that was known only to God through their wedding, so that they too might suffer together and receive the crown of martyrdom, and as Episteme said, so that we shall be together then in the heavenly kingdom afterward. May all of us attain to such faith in God that no matter what happens to us, we may maintain a good and right confession of faith and long for the day when we too will meet the Lord in his heavenly kingdom. Bye-bye.